we were discussing expectations on different spaces right uh, I partially proved this theorem right. So, we have omega x and y equals g of x. So, this theorem say is saying that you can either compute. So, this is the expectation of y. So, you can either integrate uh, you can either integrate on this space right that is that or you can integrate uh, on this space. So, basically you can compute integral g d p x with the probability law here right. So, uh, you can either go ahead and find the probability of law of, of y and integrate this or you can just keep the probability law of x and integrate g right. So, they, they are equal. So, this is something that uh, you probably use without really I mean without really knowing why it is true right. So, that is what we were trying to prove. So, we proved it for simple functions right. Uh, proved for simple functions last lecture simple g previous lecture. So, if g is a simple function we proved that integral g p g d p x is equal to integral y d p right. So, that was proved and it was trivially equal to integral y d p y because it was uh, it was only taking those finite values y 1 through y n and you could just write this as sum over y 1 probability y equal to y 1 right. So, in the simple when g was simple it is very easy. Now, uh, if you have to generalize to uh, to non negative g, then you have to uh, approximate g from below using simple functions. Suppose g is non negative and measurable. let g n be a sequence of simple functions such that g n increases to g let us say uh, for all x. Okay. Can I always do that? Because I, I have that explicit construction, we can take that g n uh, which we wrote down right by chopping down the vertical axis. So, you can always do that. So, now what happens is uh, you will have. So, g n's are simple, right. So, you will have g n of x, g n of capital X will be random variables so simple random variables which monotonically increase to g of x right. So, thus g of x g n of x let us say. So, g n is a sequence of simple functions. So, g n of x will be a, a sequence of simple random variables right and since g n increases to g I can write uh, g n of capital X increases to g of x correct fine. Now, what do we know? So, now I know that for simple functions my result is proven right. So, I am going to exploit that. So, I want to write integral y d p right. So, this is what I want 
integral y dp that is nothing but so this function so y is a so you should look at this as a function mapping omega to this r right why is a so that i can write this as integral g of big x dp so g of big x is the random variable right so i am computing expectation of y which is nothing but the expectation of g of capital x correct so i have that right this is the lhs right hand left hand side this is equal to limit intending to infinity integral g n of x dp why is that mct monotone convergence theorem that's because g n of x is a sequence of random variables that increases to g of x so this is because of mct now i know so this guy i can deal with right so this guy is equal to limit intending to infinity integral gn d px correct so i am just looking at so if you just focus on this part of the statement right i am saying that integral g t d p x if g is simple integral g d p x is equal to integral g of x so y is nothing but g of capital x right so integral g of capital x d p is equal to integral g d p x but that is true for simple functions correct so i am just using that this is equal to that because we have already proven right this is because g n is simple we already proved that previous lecture fine so that's the key step now now what happens do i know this limit this what this is equal to integral g dpx again because of mct because gn is increasing so here i am using the fact that gn of x is a sequence of increasing random variables here i am using the fact that gn of little x right is a sequence of increasing functions that's it right so when i write g of capital x i mean the random variable g of x of omega when i just write little gn or little g i mean the function of x little x correct that is the notation i have been following okay so this has been proven so i have proved uh, what i need to prove for uh, so i have proved i have proven this for any non negative function g right then the next step will be to write if is g is arbitrary we will write g is equal to g plus g minus then it will work out all right so so i the proof is over then so this is just saying that if g is my identity map right g is my identity map then integral y dp is same as integral little y dp y right so i can either so for any random variable x or y let us say expectation of y can be computed by integrating y dp or integral little y dp y if you look at that right so you can either integrate over the probability space or integrate over r okay so you can you can that's a trivial corollary right for any random variable x integral x dp is equal to integral little x dpx okay that's a simple corollary of this okay so by now you would have realized that practically i mean all basic results in integration are 
proved in exactly the same way you start off with simple functions and then you generalize to non negative functions. Now, there are two ways of doing it you either use the supremum definition or now you use monoton convergence theorem there are, there are two options right. So, one of the two is what you would keep using good. So, this proves the theorem next I want to move on to expectation of continuous random variables. Expectation of discrete random variable we already covered right. Now, I am going to derive an explicit formula for the expectation of a continuous random variable. So, what uh, the, the main result the main formula is going to use integration over different spaces and in conjunction with radon Nikodym theorem ok. So, let us uh, this is something I should have done earlier probably. So, radon Nikodym theorem I stated I sort of stated imprecisely because you did not really understand what a an abstract integral was back then right. So, now let me just recall radon Nikodym theorem and state it properly ok. So, recall radon Nikodym theorem. So, P x is absolutely continuous with respect to lambda the Lebesgue measure if and only if there exists a measurable function f x from r to 0 infinity such that for all Borel sets B, P x of B is equal to integral f x d lambda over B. Okay, so, this is an if and only if statement. Right? So, I am stating this properly now for the case of absolutely continuous measures p x with respect to Lebesgue measure ok. It holds more generally for any two sigma finite measures ok I mean in fairly general spaces, but this is how this is the only thing of concern to us. So, p x of so, it says that there exists a radon equidem derivative f x or the density f x such that for every Borel set b p x of b is equal to integral over integral over that Borel set f x d lambda. So, this is exactly what I wrote down except now you completely understand what this means. I am integrating f x which is a measurable function non negative measurable function with respect to Lebesgue measure on a Borel set ok. So, now you understand this completely right and then we went on to say that oh if the Borel set is minus infinity x then my CDF is equal to integral minus infinity to x f x d x right. So, from now on it does not really matter if you write f x d x or f x d lambda because as I mentioned uh, if the Riemann integral exists the Lebesgue integral will always exist and the two values will be equal right. So, even if I write integral f x d x you can just interpret it as a Lebesgue integral it is safer to interpret it as a Lebesgue integral because it is more general. So, I am going to use this theorem on uh, different spaces uh, this expectation on different spaces in conjunction with radon Nikodym theorem to derive an expression for the expectation of a continuous random variable. So, let me let me say this uh, as a theorem. Let x be a continuous random variable on omega f p and let p a measurable function which is either 
non negative or satisfies integral absolute g g is a measurable function from r to r isn't it so absolute g uh, g d p x is less than infinity then expectation of g of x. So, expectation of g of x is equal to integral g So, integral g f x d lambda in particular expectation of x is equal to integral x f x d lambda. Okay. So, this is the theorem. So, this is what you have been using right for a continuous random variable x. We ask you to find the expectation of x. Uh, p actually more in elementary courses you define this as the expectation right if x is a continuous random variable you say the expectation is integral x f x d x correct and for a discrete random variable you define it as sum over a i p of a i right. So, expectation was defined very disparately for continuous random variables and discrete random variables in more elementary courses and if the random variable is some mixture or something you have to invent another formula and now we know that actually there are singular random variables mixtures thereof right and for those none of your elementary formula will work right. But so, we what we have so, the uh, the mathematically sound way of defining it is to just give one uniform definition integral x d p and particularize it for discrete continuous whatever you you have ok. So, the definition is the same expectation of x is integral x d p right integrate the random variable with respect to measure p that is the definition and that gives you different formulae ok. So, the discrete formula that you are familiar with comes out of that and so does the formula for continuous random variables ok. So, in some sense so this is not a definition this is something you are going to prove right. We define the expectation as integral x d p and prove that this is the formula for expectation of x for a continuous random variable. So, this works for uh, actually so there are some technical conditions. So, this definitely works for non negative functions g ok in which case the integral is always well defined and it also works when the g is absolutely integrable meaning that g plus and g minus if you write down g plus and g minus you do not have the infinity minus infinity kind of problems ok you have a very well defined real number right in those both these cases this this works. So, any questions on the statement? So, integral x f x. So, this is x f capital X d lambda f x is the density right. So, so we expect on f p. So, with p d f f x ok. X is a continuous random variable, so it has a density, and 
the expectation is given by the integral of x f x d lambda okay this is over the whole real line when i don't say anything it's over the whole real line right in more elementary notation you will write this as integral minus infinity to infinity x f x of x d x right except now i'm writing it as a lebesgue integral so right you already know this formula this is nothing new how would you prove it assume g is simple right so every theorem in integration you can start off by the statement right i think every you can never go wrong by starting off with single simple functions assume g is simple with g of omega is equal to sum over ai i a i of omega i equals 1 through n then expectation of g of x see now i am going to use the expectations over different spaces the previous theorem so i am going to write this as integral g dpx okay this was the equality you proved in the earlier theorem okay and actually g is simple so this, uh, this certainly holds and now this is equal to so you are integrating a simple function g is now simple with this form with respect to some measure px so this is this should be equal to what by definition right this is equal to sum i equals 1 through n a i p x of so i am integrating with respect to measure p x so p x of a i isn't it big a i but p x of a i i already know what is p x of a i a dot equal to theorem right so integral over a i f x d lambda ok so they let me do that a i integral over big a i f x d lambda so this is because of radon equation so this is because of integration over different spaces this is because g is simple and that is because of radon equation okay now uh, you can see there is a scaling law for integrals right so i can bring the ai inside here fine and i can then i will have a summation integral correct that is equal to so sum over i equals 1 through n uh, integral capital ai ai fx d lambda this is because of the scaling property of integral right you can always bring constants inside and outside so i'm going to write this so now what is the integral of a function over a measurable set defined as in terms of the indicator right so you can i can write this in terms of the let me do this properly sum over i equals 1 through n integral i am not going to write a i now i am simply going to write uh, a i so little a i indicator a i and f x d lambda that is by definition of uh, the integral over a measurable set 
So, now I have a summation and an integration right. So, this is a finite summation correct. So, this is a finite summation. So, sum of a finite number of integrals is equal to integral of the sum again by the linearity of integrals right. So, integral g plus h is always integral g plus integral, integral h you have n such terms here right. So, the by linearity so that is equal to sum over i equals 1 through n. So, okay, integral I put the integral out a i uh, i a i I can bring the f x out and then put a d lambda correct. Now, what is that? What is inside the parenthesis here? G correct. So, that is equal to integral g f x d lambda. So, the proof is complete for g simple okay, good. So, now, I will have to approximate for any non negative g, I will have to approximate g using simple functions from below right. Now, next let g be non negative. Non negative and measurable. Let g n be a sequence of simple functions such that g n increases to g. I know I can always do that. Right, I can always write any non negative function as a monotone limit of simple functions. So, that is always allowed. So, now I, I have to write. So, again I have to try and do this right. So, now I have to use monotone convergence theorem right. So, I will write expectation of g of x. is equal to uh, limit right you will agree with that because of m c t uh, this is equal to. So, expectation of g n of x we have already sorted out g n is simple right we already know what that is. So, this is equal to limit n tending to infinity I am just keeping the limit and then I can write integral g n f x d lambda correct. Now, what can you say about this integrand? So, the integrand converges to g f x certainly right does it converge monotonically why? because f x is non negative, f x is a non negative function. So, this guy this guy increases to g f x. So, this is this is a monotonic convergence right because f x is non negative. So, again monotone the monotone convergence theorem will help you right. So, you can take the limit inside. So, again by m c t m c t you have integral g f x 
d lambda ok so you can see how powerful the mct is right so combined with the fact that there is always some se sequence of simple functions that you can approximate from below right some you can use you can prove properties very explicitly for simple functions and use monotone convergence theorem is very powerful uh, very it is a very powerful result it, and it gives you for a all measurable positive measurable non negative measurable functions. Next of course, if g is possibly negative you have to write it as g plus and g minus g plus minus g minus and in that case this will help you that the fact that this integral is uh, the absolute integral is bounded means that. Uh, the positive part and the negative part are finite and so you will not have any uh, problems of blowing up and so on right. So, then this everything will go through is the same ok. Ok, so that is the formula to remember right. So, this is what you would normally write as. So, in more elementary courses you would write expectation of g of x is equal to integral minus infinity infinity g of little x f x of little x d x right this is what you have been using right that is exactly what we have proved except this looks a little different but it is the same thing I have written it as a Lebesgue integral that is all ok. And in particular if you are computing expectation of x you will simply integrate x times the density over the whole space. Okay. Now, you can take all your favorite uh, continuous random variables right we listed exponential Gaussian <coughs> one sided Cauchy two sided Cauchy right integrate happily and find out their means right. So, if you have an exponential uh, p d f mu e power minus mu x you can fire you can prove that the mean is 1 over mu ok. Uh, and for the for the n mu sigma square the Gaussian mu will turn out to be the mean ok. So, you have an exponential random variable and if you want to compute expectation of x is equal to integral x f x d lambda which is equal to nothing but x mu e power minus mu x from 0 to infinity right. this will turn out to be 1 over mu ok. If, you, if I give you some other function let us say x power n or something you can still compute it right because we know that integral you will just integrate x power n f x if you want expectation of x power n right. So, for example, if you take expectation of x squared you will simply integrate x squared f x d lambda right which is x squared mu e power minus mu x d x. and this will be equal to 2 over mu square if I remember correctly ok. 
you can calculate it right these are integrals you can do by integrating by parts or all their standard integrals basically okay so on if you have um, if you have a gaussian if you have a gaussian the expectation of x all this right e power minus x minus mu squared over 2 sigma squared over sigma root 2 pi dx. So, if in order to do this integral you can make a substitution x minus mu over sigma equal to t. Okay. If you make that substitution uh, you will get a you will you can, you can do it much more easily all right. So, in this basically this will simplify to just mu. Okay. So, in order to do you can put so in order to do this integral you can put x minus mu over sigma uh, equal to t okay. then you can do this integral easily. If you have to give you another example, if you have f x of x is equal to uh, 2 over pi 1 over 1 plus x squared x is greater than or equal to 0. So, this is a one sided Cauchy distribution right in this case expectation of x be equal to integral 0 over infinity 2 over pi x over 1 plus x squared d x right. Now, if you put 1 plus you know if you put x squared equal to t 2 x d x would be d t right. So, this will become uh, log. So, it will become 1, 1 over pi log 1 plus x squared I think evaluated from 0 to infinity right and this will be equal to infinity plus infinity. Okay. So, the one sided Cauchy has a infinite mean. Okay. What if you take a two sided Cauchy, if I have f x of x is equal to 1 over pi 1 over 1 plus x squared over all real numbers x, hmm? then you will have the x, the, x, the x plus component will have an infinite mean, the x minus component will have an infinite mean. So, the expectation is, so is it 0 or not defined? Not defined, when you have infinity minus infinity form it is not defined. Okay. So, let me just write down if you have f x of x is equal to 1 over pi 1 plus x squared for all x in R, then expectation of x is undefined. So, the two sided Cauchy or what is normally represent normally uh, what is normally uh, talked about as the Cauchy PDF Cauchy distribution expectation of x is undefined it does not have a mean 
right does not have an expected value whereas the one sided Cauchy is uh, has a well defined expected value of plus infinity okay uh, so this is pi times 1 plus x square for all x both so it is both over positive and negative x. So, here expectation of x is undefined. Okay. Okay. So, when you are given a random variable which takes both positive and negative values ideally you should integrate. So, you split it as x plus and x minus evaluate them separately. So, here I have generally taken the liberty of integrating from minus infinity to infinity ideally. So, this is a this Gaussian takes both positive and negative values. So, you split it as positive and negative and make sure they are both they are both finite in this case. So, I could take the liberty of integrating from minus infinity to infinity. In this case you cannot integrate from minus infinity to infinity in fact, so if you try and do that you will get some function like this right you will get if you just blindly apply the formula x f x you will get an integral like uh, that right 1 over. So, you will get x over pi 1 plus x squared d x right if you blindly apply the formula this is what you will get and this integral uh, well this integral does not really see the problem is this integral does not it is not really 0 this integral is not 0. Okay. The reason this integral is not 0 is because remember when you in, even in Riemann integral when you define integral minus infinity to infinity you define it as limit m 1 tending to infinity m 2 tending to infinity minus m 1 to m 2 correct and that limit does not exist right. So, even if you were to so this is by definition limit m 1 to infinity m 2 to infinity integral minus m 1 to m 2 all that d x right and this limit does not exist it does not exist right. In particular it is not defined as limit m tending to infinity minus m to m all that that is not what it is. So, if it were defined as limit m tending to infinity minus m to m of this odd function then you will say integral minus m to m of an odd function is 0 and then the limit is it is not it is not true right. So, that limit m tending to infinity minus m to m is called the Cauchy principle value it is not the value of the integral right you might have studied this in calculus right. So, this is the this integral does not exist it is not 0 okay. it is undefined this, this is undefined right this limit does not exist and it is not 0 in particular. But in this case, there is no such problem. Okay. Except from Cauchy, in all the random variables, the mean is inside the range of the random variable. It is between by this finite. But in the Cauchy, it is infinite, even though the random variable do not take the value infinite. Yes, correct. So, what this says is that a random see after all a Cauchy random variable or even the random variable the discrete random variable right 6 over pi squared 1 over k square we looked at that. So, those are see obviously these random variables are finite with probability 1 right they have to take only real values with probability 1, uh, but the expectation can be plus infinity right that is what it means. So, there are random variables whose expectation is in fact plus infinity, but 
they are finite they never take the value infinity right they are finite with probability 1 they only take values in the positive real number they never take the value plus infinity uh, but the expectation can be plus infinity no problem okay are there any questions Is this very clear? Okay, so we have uh, dominated convergence theorem remaining, dominated convergence theorem and Fatus lemma. So it's probably too little time to start it now. Okay, so we will uh, I will stop the lecture here.